Good morning, we survived. <laughs> we're in our hotel, we're finally warm, and we're in a mental state now that we can finally talk about days eight through 11 because man, those were the hardest days of the entire trek. I'm gonna start by talking because day eight was the summit of Kalapatar and I did that one by myself. No judgment, <laughs> she would have died. I don't blame her, I almost died. The morning started at 4 a.m., pitch black, stepped outside with my guide, the stars were out, it was a full supermoon, the mountains were glowing, and it was negative 22 degrees Celsius, aka negative seven degrees Fahrenheit. Within five minutes, hadn't even started up the mountain yet, my face mask froze to my face. It was so cold outside that the ground was twinkling underneath my headlamp and I still had two hours to go up, and then another hour back down. So I started up, the ground was frozen, my feet were so cold that I was actually super nervous that I had frostbite, and it wasn't until I got back down later that day that other people had the same feeling. So this whole time, I'm walking by myself in the pitch black, and I'm thinking, am I the only stupid person on the planet that's doing this? I wasn't. I finally make it to the top two hours later. There are a couple people up there Worth noting, this is part of everyone's package trek, but it is so difficult and so cold that nobody goes. So there were probably like 13 people at the top, maybe between 13 and 20. So the intent of the trek is you get to the summit. It is the best view of Mount Everest on the entire EBC trail, and you get to see the sun come up. Unfortunately, it is so bloody cold that you can't enjoy the sun rising. Everyone around you is shivering, trying to keep alive. Not just trying to keep warm, trying to keep alive. <laughs> but when the sun comes up, it is the most beautiful view on the entire trek. Was it worth it? Yes. That was the most miserable and stupid thing I've ever done. But now I get to brag and say that I've been to the top of Kalapatar. Would I do it again? No way! Am I glad Taylor didn't go? Yes way! Oh, oh my god. When I mean the stupidest thing I've ever done, I mean that was the stupidest thing I have ever done. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. At the final leg of it, I was climbing on my hands and feet. I thought I was gonna die. Then it was still another hour back down. But I'm glad I did it. This is all by 7 a.m. I'm now back down the hill, we have breakfast, and we're ready to head to the city of Pingboche. We journeyed back, we grabbed some lunch, another very strange lunch on the trail that we came to expect. Some of the foods are just a little weird, but you gotta expect it because it's brought up for days and days in the middle of nowhere in freezing temperatures. You get what you get. We passed beautiful views that we hadn't seen on the way up, we passed yaks, we had gorgeous weather, and a big complaint on the EBC is that it is one way up, one way back, but we actually came to find out that that was actually really great because, for example, on day six, there was a terrible snowstorm and the views on that day are some of the best views on the entire trek, and by going back the same route, we had gorgeous weather, and we would have been totally sad if we missed all of that. So mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed getting that new perspective on the way back, even though it was technically the same scenery. It's the best scenery on planet Earth, so you can't complain. For me, it was an 18 mile day. For Taylor, it was a 15 mile day, not too shabby. So morning of day nine, we left the little village of Pengboche to head to Manjo. 
Goodbye, Pangboche. <laughs> we have another really long day ahead of us. The itinerary lists this day as stopping in Namche Bazaar. However, our guide recommended that we just trudge on for another hour and a half because it would make the next day even better. And part of this trail was slightly different than before, so we got to see some new Buddhist monuments and just enjoy the scenery. Again, we had amazing weather, so the views are just ridiculous everywhere you go. We definitely got lucky this day. It was so nice. We passed a herd of goats, Himalayan mountain goats. We tried to ask our guide what species they were. He didn't even know. But that was one of the first real signs of wildlife that we had seen in days. So that was pretty exciting. After about five hours of up, and down and up and down <laughs> we made it to Namche Bazaar <laughs> one of our favorite villages throughout the entire EBC trek so we got one last view of the city we grabbed some lunch after lunch we hit the trail for about another hour and a half and this was our final goodbye to Everest oh <laughs> that was weird to see yeah. something like that and know that you probably will never see it again, that was a hard goodbye. It was a it was a good moment though. I'm super glad our last day we had the view. <laughs> but that was that was bittersweet. It was totally bittersweet. And then <laughs> from Namche Bazaar, it was all downhill, and that's kind of when the pain set in. Every step we took, our knees and hips were aching. We said goodbye to our favorite suspension bridge and the highest suspension bridge throughout the trek and made our way on to Manjo, completing our day at 15 miles again. Uh, <laughs> this was a special guest house though. The whole time we had been miserably cold, uncomfortable, really no access to a power other than a couple of light bulbs in the dining room and this place gave you free plugins. Let us be the first to tell you that that is not something that you ever get. So that was like luxury. We felt mm -hmm. like we were finally back on planet Earth for the first time. <laughs> it was also really enjoyable because we got to plug in the computer and actually go through all the photos that we had taken for over a week. And we just got to kind of relive every part of the trail. And it was really nice to just, I don't know, go through all of it. Awesome it place good. to stay. Yeah. Even though on day 10, you are almost done, it is one of the top three most brutal days, easily. Day eight, really brutal for me because I went all the way up to Kalapatar. Day nine, super brutal because it's up and down and up and down. Day 10, you don't realize how far down in elevation you are and how high Lukla is, so you have to go all the way back up. <laughs> And oh my gosh, it hurts. We had breakfast at 6.30 a.m. in order to hit the trail and make it to Lukla in time for three o'clock, which is when the guide gets your tickets together for the next day and makes sure that you have a flight out. We hiked up, said goodbye to the Sargar Mata National Park sign, and from then on, we were never in the national park again. Again, we were greeted by the hideous up and down staircases. Our ankles were dying. We were sweating because you're in low elevation. So it was kind of all the same things that we forgot that we didn't like about day one that were back all over again, including the smell of mule poop. You would not believe the amount of mule farts and turds <laughs> that are coming at you from all angles. There were just people in the middle of the trail just sitting there cracking up because they were being farted on. It's like, oh, oh, stop it. Uh, uh. And on top of that, this was the first official day of trekking season, which meant there were hordes of people. We were warned that EBC was busy. We didn't know, but we hit it early and lucked out. But the day that we left, it was getting wild and we were so glad to get out of there. I feel bad for anyone who's on the mountain now. We said goodbye to our final cable bridge of the trek, which to be honest, were some of the best moments of the entire trek, just to be that high and appreciate 
the work and the ingenuity that goes into making these bridges and the fact that animals, people, everything, they use them and rely on them every single day. That was a big deal for us and so it was sad to say goodbye. We had our final lunch in the small town of Pak Ding from where we once came on day one. We finished the very painful ascent all the way back up to the town of Lukla and rounded off with a white people inspired chest bump. Victory. Day 11 was our easiest day yet. <laughs> this was the day that we got to fly out of Lukla and head back to Kathmandu. So we chowed down on our final breakfast at 7 a.m. in the morning in order to make it to the airport on time. We did spend some time watching the flights come in and out <laughs> and kind of mentally prepared ourselves for this takeoff, which is a little interesting. So the runway is at about a 30 degree angle, which is very weird. I've never seen anything like it. But what we found out is that when the flights land, the runway is so short and there is a brick wall at the other end that the angle up makes it so that the planes coming in hot can slow down quickly and make a sharp right turn and end the flight. For the flights that are leaving, the angle is useful because at the end of the runway is a sheer cliff. And this is the Himalayas. We're talking thousands of feet down. So they need enough speed to make it off of the runway before they go crashing over the edge. So this was really interesting to watch before we got on the plane ourselves. These flights are canceled all of the time. We lucked out, we had good weather, and so for us, takeoff was easy. It can be a total nightmare, and we've seen videos that it is a total nightmare, <laughs> but we survived. After takeoff, the flight is actually quite peaceful. You fly at 11,000 feet, and you're just kind of eye level with so many mountains in the area that you forget about landing or takeoff and you just kind of take in the scenery and just enjoy your 27 minute flight. <laughs> it is the most expensive 27 minute flight on planet Earth, but what you kind of get out of it is like a personal tour of all of Nepal. Right underneath you are all of the remote villages, you see the mountains in the distance, the landing in Kathmandu is gorgeous. There's so much to that city that you just don't see. And so it's just kind of a nice final little ending to an amazing trip. And just like that, it's all over. Would we recommend it to everyone? Absolutely. Would everyone enjoy it? No. Absolutely not. This trek is serious. We took it seriously, so we had a good time. We prepared well, we had the right gear, we made sure that we were healthy before we went to Nepal. So everything kind of fell into place for us, but if you don't take this seriously, you are not gonna have a good time. It is the coldest that I have ever been in my life. And that is one thing that I didn't really take seriously is just how immensely frigid these nights and days are. It's crazy. So if you don't like cold, it's not for you. We are two people that have not done a good job exercising on the road, and we were really, really nervous before we went on this trek. Mm -hmm. And we saw people of all shapes and sizes and ages making it to the end. And is it hard? Of course it's hard. But you do not need to be a seasoned athlete in order to make this happen. You could be the strongest Olympian in the world, and if you have a sinus infection, you're not gonna make it to the top. Everyone's journey is totally <laughs> unique based on the current state that their body is in, truly. We were just so lucky that we had been taking vitamin C and watching our immune systems and making sure that we were gonna be okay because we saw people that were struggling on day one that looked way more fit than we did. And not even that, like the acute mountain sickness that you can get, it can just show up out of nowhere. You could be the healthiest individual on the planet and you still might have a headache or have issues with vomiting or diarrhea or anything like that and you can't make it. So it's like an individual experience for everybody. No, totally. not one person is the same. I think the other question we'll probably get a lot is will we do this again? And my answer, and I think it's the same for Taylor, is no. <laughs> not because I didn't love it, this was the most amazing thing that we have ever accomplished. 
and the Himalayas are probably the most photogenic place on planet Earth. But this is one of those times that you do it once and you want to leave it there. Because mm -hmm. if you do it again, you take the risk of just not enjoying it as much as before because there's, there's just something magical about seeing something for the first time and then leaving it in the past because you can never relive that thing twice. Anytime that we've ever gone somewhere twice, that's always the case for us. I just think this is one of those really important life mm -hmm. moments that you do once and you move on and you just cherish those memories for the rest of your life. This was the coolest thing we have ever done. Yeah. Would we go back to Nepal and see other areas of the Himalayas? Yes. Just not right now. <laughs> I think we need a break. <laughs> we need some time. Our legs, our brains, we need a minute. Yeah. But that was the greatest moment of our entire life. Hands down.